got. Floppy wheels. <laughs> I think it'll drive straight. Okay, so this morning we are going to change out the inner and outer tie rods. That's the outer and the inner is up there behind the skid plate. So here's the new guys here. Got the outer and we got the inner and the inner comes with a grease nipple and the cotter pin for the castle nut and this guy's just got a nylon locking nut there. Um, I mean they should perform just fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the skid plate. There are four bolts. One, two, three, and four uh, to expose the inner tie rods and just the whole assembly in general. We're going to be using a 12 millimeter socket to make that happen. Okay, so the skid plate is now off. Uh, we got the four bolts there. Next up is to jack up the vehicle. I'm going to jack it up from the center and then support it on the left and right of uh, the jack uh, just to get it up uh, high enough to work on. And so there's not a lot of stress on the wheels as we take the tie rods off. So the vehicle is now up on the jack and the jack stands. What I'm going to do is undo the connection at the tire or at the wheel side, I guess we'll call it, first. And then you have more flexibility to try and pop it out from there. Since these are castle bolts, they got little cotter pins in there. We're going to get a pair of pliers and just try and get those guys out. Maybe some taps if required. So we're using a three quarters socket on my breaker bar. The cotter pin wouldn't come out, so we're just kind of breaking it apart. So we're just gonna put some penetrating oil on there, make life a little easier. So yeah, and you can see these guys are kind of wobbly. Can't be good. Thank ya. Good? Yep. Now the next step is to use this Pitman puller I got from Canadian Tire uh, to pop these guys out of their holes. Sort of the same idea as ball joints for those of you that have done ball joints but uh, a little bit smaller. Okay, so this is the driver's side guy. And as you can see, this one is just super wobbly, busted. This one's uh, not too bad, but still on its way out. Are you serious? What? The freaking tool just cracked. It did? Yeah. So I thought it was the tie rod 
It's not. The crack was from this crappy tool from Crappy Tire. So we're gonna go back to Crappy Tire and get a new crappy tool. Okay, so we went to Crappy Tire and they weren't so crappy because they replaced the tie rod Pittman arm puller. That's so annoying. What a piece of garbage. What's it made out of? China. <laughs> it's made out of garbage China. Uh, we've broken so far two Pittman arm pullers. So we've now resorted to the good old trusty pickle fork. Good solid few wax on there. Broke it out of its hole. After a closer inspection, right in there, that bolt is really rusty and is probably gonna fall apart. So rather than take this all apart, uh, we went to the store and we're gonna replicate what we see here with the new parts here. So what we're doing here is putting on some anti-seize. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is try and match up the threads exactly. We're just gonna assume that these are the same size, they look pretty close, and uh, we'll see where that gets us. Okay, so now I'm just gonna use some spray and iron and a scrub brush and just clean off the area where the new tie rods are gonna go on. Okay. So, uh, what we did, we turned uh, the steering wheel inside the vehicle to just to slide this guy a little bit over to the driver's side so we could slip the inner tie rod in to this hole here. So we can fit in like so. Okay. Uh, we're going to cinch these guys down uh, just enough to get them on there uh, and then we'll do up the other guy and see how the wheels look with the steering wheel and hopefully they're good enough to go. Up here is a three quarter uh, inch socket and we're just going to tighten it up just enough so you, it's, it's snug and the, the holes line up for the cotter pin. And this guy here is roughly a 7 8 Is right here. Okay, so what we did was we took the steering wheel in the car, counted how many rotations is a full from the stops on the left to the stops on the right, cut that in half, that's middle, and sure enough, they look pretty in line there. Obviously the tires are kind of sagging because the vehicle is not off the jacks yet, but they look good enough to get us to the shop. So what we're going to do is uh, cinch down all the bolts so nothing shifts and we're going to uh, make the cotter pins more permanent by bending them around uh, the nut. I'm gonna leave the skid plate off for the crew at Caltire, uh, just cause there's no point in putting it back on for now. Yesterday we took the Foreigner to Caltire and got these new bad boys on here. BF Goodrich KO2s, all terrains. They also did an alignment for us after the tie rod job. So what I'm going to do right now is just uh, go through and uh, set all the torques uh, correctly. And reading online is 
I've heard some people say 61 foot-pounds and 67 foot-pounds. I'm just going to put them at 65 uh, torque. And since they did an alignment, I'm just going to leave these guys uh, alone because that's part of the adjustment there. And we're going to use a 22 millimeter socket. And that's 65. Okay, so now we're going to torque the castle nut. I'm going to put it to 65 uh, foot-pounds as well, same as the outer ones. And then we'll uh, line up the hole and put the cotter pin in. And we're going to use a 19 millimeter for that. And so what I do is I bend one part of the cotter pin over the top and the other one I wrap around the side. Just like so. And now we're going to do that to the other side and then put the skid plate back on. And that is a 12 millimeter uh, for the bolts that attach the skid plate. So we're gonna go for a little drive now, test out the new t wheels. Other way. Oh my god! Fun. Yeah, your committing is just spinning. <laughs> That's why it freaks me out.